Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Good afternoon, good evening, everyone. I hope everybody can see uh, the slides that I've put on uh, the screen. Shazad? Yes, Abdullah. Okay, so the slides are visible, right? Yeah. Okay, and I'm also audible to everybody. Everybody can hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, lovely. Let's begin. Uh, today's topic is very interesting because it's talking about self-confidence. Confidence, confidence is, is something that everybody um, looks forward to, everybody wants to achieve, everybody thinks they need to have. And the reason for that is confidence gives you a position that allows you to get closer to success or to get closer to what you need to achieve or be. And in today's um, circumstances where we are, and uh, the events that are happening around us, coronavirus, uh, recession in the market, stock market crashing, oil prices crashing, etc. I think everybody is looking forward to something called confidence within themselves to understand and manage the situation. So today's situ um, uh, session is all about how you can develop yourself to be more confident. Now, confidence is something that you can create. It's not that something you cannot create. Confidence is not something that is only secluded and, and exclusive to a few people. Confidence is something that can be achieved by anybody and everybody. Everybody can have confidence. So, so let's start the session um, with, okay, let's go to this. All right, a bit about me. Uh, I am CEO of a venture capital fund that is in Kuwait, but we are based in the UK and we invest in America. We invest primarily in early stage and series A um, startup uh, companies as a venture capital fund. I previously worked for a, a telecom and technology giant called British Telecom, and I used to head them as director of business development for Middle East and North Africa. I was with them for around eight years. I've advised a lot of um, family businesses uh, while I was in my career. Now, the most important thing for you to understand and know is what is really in control? Who is really in control? Are you in control? Is your brain in control? Is your body in control? Because when you have a problem in life, when you have a situation, you have that freeze moment, you know, you call yourself, you say, I got cold feet. You say that, hey, you know, I, I didn't know what to do. I just froze. Now, let's try to understand who's in control. Now, there's three sides of you. It's you, your brain, and your body. You have decisions, options, and choices. You, as Shahzad, as Shahinsha, as Muhammad, as Ibrahim, as Vijay, as Mohan, as David, as Patrick, as Jane, as Mary, have decisions, options, and choices. This is with you. While your brain, the only thing it can do is qualify the information that you already have, the knowledge that you've already created within your brain, and then use your intelligence to understand whether the decisions and choices and options that you have are the ones that you need to go for. But everything is always in your control. Your brain or your body does not move by itself. Have you ever realized if you attended a wedding and you met someone that you've never seen in your life, do you see your right hand going to that person and shaking hands? No, because if you don't know that person, that means your brain is telling you that I don't know this person, hence I'll just do a polite hmm and I will walk away. I will not say salam alaikum, I will not say good evening, how are you? Because I don't know this person. Whereas if you know this person, then your brain already has the name of that person, the relationship that you have with that person, and your brain says, hey, this is someone that you know. So say salam alaikum, say good evening, say how are you, ask him about his family because you know him. So the information that you store in your brain allows you to make choices and decisions. Now, how you do that and why you do that decides whether you're going to be confident or not in life. Okay. So this was an important slide because this allows you to understand that your body does not move by itself. It moves with instructions from the brain and your brain only gets instructions that you have given it. Always remember the worst person, the strongest person, the most, uh, you know, richest person in the world cannot, cannot make the hand talk. 
Can you make your hand talk? Do you think Hitler could have made his hand talk? Do you think Mussolini could have made his hand talk? Do you think Bill Gates can make his hand talk? Do you think Mark Zuckerberg can make his hand talk? No. God, Allah, has given specific functions for everything in your body. And your hand is not supposed to talk. So the function of the hand is to hold, is to move, is to help you with your daily activity. It is not to talk. So every activity in your body has been designated a particular role. And that role is the only thing it will do. So if you look at this particular slide, I've divided it into two parts. The one on the left, birth, death, your body parts, time, and functions. This is something you have zero control on. You were born because that was your time. You will die because that is your time. And everything in your body, like I told you, is something that has specific roles, specific activity, and they will not change. Those activities will not change. So your body parts are given specific activities. So if you ever watched uh, Sachin Tendulkar, Virat Kohli, whoever, uh, watch uh, and, and watch them play a good match, uh, a beautiful innings of 100 runs or 200 runs, and you think that they played well. They played well because all parts of your body were trained and exercised and routined into performing several acts over a number of hours, a number of days, a number of years, until they became very good at it. And time is something you have no control about. Time goes on. Time does not stop for you. Time does not stop if you're happy. Time does not stop if you're sad. Time does not stop if you are in a glorious mood. Time does not stop for your victories. Time does not stop for your failures. Time moves on, so you have no control of it. And all the functions that happen within the universe, the night and day, uh, the summer and winter, you have no control of it. It keeps going on. Whoever has got their mic on, please, can you mute your mic? I can hear you. Thank you. So everything on the left side is not within your control. So what is within your control? Within your control is your abilities, your capabilities, your ability to have patience, how you manage your time, your commitment to what you do. These are everything that you have control on. These are everything that you can do something with. Uh, somebody has to please mute their mic. Uh, there are kids talking behind. Thank you. So all of this is, is very much something that you have within your control. So everything on the left is not something you can control. Everything on the right is something you can control. Now, what happens when you're low in confidence? When you're low in confidence, it leads you to fear. Why? Because when you don't have confidence, you become very fearful. You become very scared. You're not sure of what's going to happen. You're not in control. Because of that, you lead to a situation, you are put in a situation where you have no idea what to do. So your boss is angry. You don't know what to do because you were low on confidence. You lost all your order for your business. Now you're low on confidence. You lost most of your money. You're low on confidence. You don't know what coronavirus will do. You're low on confidence. You don't know how the stock market will react in the next few months. You're low on confidence. All of that leads to fear. Now, what does fear do? Fear weakens your immune system. It actually does that. It weakens your immune system. It creates depression in you. It also creates a number of chain reactions that create stress for you. You're stressful. And as a stressful person, you're not going to make the right decisions. As a stressful person, you, your heart will be racing very fast. And because of that, you will be always very, very stringent and it's not going to help you relax. And with time, all of this will make you actually very lazy. So you need to stay away from fear because fear is not something that will give you any amount of positivity. So besides doing a lot of damage within your, your system, your physical body system, it also creates for you a disadvantage in your life. So here are some of your problems, right? 
Your problems at work is your boss. Your problems at work is that golden eyed boy of your boss. Your problem at work is your friend with a better job. So you're working as a programmer. He's working as a programmer. You get uh, 50,000 rupees a month and he's getting 75,000 rupees a month. Okay, that's a problem for you. Your relative with a better life, every time you meet this relative, he's talking about where he's going for a holiday, the new car he bought, the new brands he has, et cetera, et cetera. These are all your problems. These are your problems because you are making them your problems. Your problems lead to a bad health, a bad married life, lack of attention to your kids, feeling of insecurity, you lose your friends, and one fine day you start hiding away from people because you think you're such a big failure, you can't really face people. So let me add some more problems to your life. So if you thought you had enough problems, let me give you some more. So we have a failing economy. So uh, the Indian economy in particular came into um, the economic uh, highlights by saying that we're going to finish the year at 7% and we finished at 4.5%. There was not money, enough money in, in the government systems, hence a lot of the banks started to, to lose control and, and all of a sudden you know, they started defaulting. Um, and now we have a falling stock market because of coronavirus. We have a very bleak outlook for 2020. There is a potential of a large scale uh, unemployment happening globally and none of the countries are immune from that. Okay, so these are all problems that you have. Always remember there are problems in your life, in the world, in, in, in existence that you don't have control of. Do you have control of how to manage coronavirus? Yeah, you will take preventive actions, you will have social distancing, you will quarantine yourself, but that's all you can do. But if you're still supposed to get infected, you will still get infected. So there are stuff in life that you can manage and there's a lot of stuff in life that you cannot manage. You don't know what to do with it. So how do you deal with that? So how do you still stand out with confidence? Where do you get that confidence? What is this product called confidence? Do I buy it on a shelf? Or do I create it? Let's see what we can do, all right? So confidence is like the cat that roars like a lion. When you have a cat at home, and the cat has a, a demeanor, a, a personality, and the cat says, hey, you know what? I'm really a lion. So when the cat starts roaring like a lion, that's confidence. Confidence comes in various different shapes and sizes. It's your look, it's your talk, it's your walk, it's the way you present, it's the way you behave. It's all confidence. But confidence in particular is about how people perceive you. If people perceive you in a particular way, then that is termed as confidence. And that particular way has to be strong. That has to be really something worth of strength. Now, most people are used to following other people, right? So most people think, uh, I think I need to be like Mark Zuckerberg. Some people think like, I need to be like uh, Bill Gates. I need to be like um, Hussein Bolt. I need to be like Virat Kohli. I need to be like that actor. I need to be like that singer. Now, let me explain to you the concept of the lion of the jungle. Now, the lion of the jungle is a concept. There is no real lion who is lion of all the lions in the jungle. Every lion in the jungle is called lion of the jungle. Now, unfortunately, we in society, what we do is we're so impressed by icons and successful people that we follow the concept of lion of the jungle. So we always think that we need to be like that. We need to go in and, and become like Bill Gates. We need to go in and become like Mark Zuckerberg. No, you have to create your own success. Your success is completely tailor fit for you because everything that you have within you, your mind, the way you think, the way you talk, it's all about you. So you need to try and be the lion, not the lion of the jungle. You need to try and become what best you can be, not what best somebody else is. Most people ask me what comes first, success or confidence? Now, just imagine if you had no confidence and you became successful, you know what that's called? That's called getting lucky. That means you are lucky. And getting lucky is not a good rule in life to have. You should not get lucky. 
You should always know where success came from. That is why confidence is the first thing you need to make and build before you get successful. Because the more confidence you have, the more self-belief you will have about yourself. You know, there are a lot of people that I see on social media who are connected to me. I just love the way they put the pictures about themselves online. It's very impressive. It's not about whether they're good looking or beautiful. It's about the image, the image that they're trying to portray to people. They're trying to say, this is me. This is who I am. I am beautiful. I am handsome. I am strong. I am powerful. So the image you want to give to people has to personify who you are. And that usually comes with confidence. Confidence makes you a lot more prettier than who you are. Confidence makes you a lot more handsome than what you can be. Confidence makes you a lot more stronger than what your muscles are. You know, I've seen a lot of people who are really thin take over a guy who's got a lot of muscles. Why? Confidence. The guy with muscles doesn't know what's going to happen. The guy without muscles knows exactly what he's doing. So confidence comes before success. Have you ever seen someone in a circus who's, who's playing around with five or six lions or tigers, right? Have you ever asked yourself, is this guy a fool? Is this guy silly? Is this guy dumb to enter a cage with five or six lions? How did he do that? Oh, he had confidence. Well, guess what? He wasn't born with it. Confidence is not something that is given to you at birth. You were born and your mother said, oh, my darling child, here is confidence. Here's some money, here's some gold, and here's confidence. No, it doesn't work like that. Confidence is something that you create. So this guy who jumped into the cage with five or six lions, he first watched them from outside the cage. He started to understand this, this animal, lion started to read about it, started to understand what makes this lion upset, then started to work with them by being outside the cage, then slowly getting inside the cage, hiding his fear, trying to show them that he's part of their domain, of their environment. That took a lot of awareness, a lot of practice, and a lot of patience. Until he did that for a number of weeks and months, he did not enter the cage. And when he entered the cage, those lions were used to him. And he knew exactly what to do with them. And then he made them do what he wished for them to do. And then they started running around like little cats. And you've seen that in circus so many times. And it always amazes you, no matter, no matter how old you are. You're three years old or you're 300 years old. You always love that part in a circus. So confidence puts you in control. That is why being confident is very important. That is why having confidence is very important. So when your boss is barking orders at you, if you had confidence, you would listen to the part which is good advice and you would let go of the part which is pure dog barking. Because that's what most bosses do. They just bark. They think they can do it and get away with it. So they do it, All right? So confidence puts you in control, just like the man in the circus, which has a cage filled with lions. Most people are scared of failure, right? Most people think that if I fail, then that's it. Well, guess what? Failure is a destination that's exactly between confidence and success. If this is confidence, if this is success, failure is right here. This is failure. So if you want to be successful, you need to meet failure a number of times, a number of times. So famous people like Bill Gates, who was a Harvard school dropout. He did not finish his, his university. He launched a, a business called Traff or Data. So he launched a company called Traffo Data and Traffo Data failed very badly. It made him rethink about his business approach, but it didn't make him stop. He never stopped thinking about launching his own business. And he launched Microsoft and he became who he is. Warren Buffett, the famous billionaire you all know, he was a chewing gum salesman. Oprah Winfrey, the famous TV show uh, host, she was a grocery store clerk. And Michael Bloomberg, the former mayor of New York, and, and the billionaire who's trying to run for presidency recently was a parking lot attendant. He was a parking lot attendant. So anybody listening to this video, anybody watching this session, let me assure you today, who you are today does not define who you can become. Who you are today does not define who you can become. What you can become is pretty much 
everything about what you can do. And what you can do decides very much on the fact that you have confidence or you don't have confidence. Confidence decides who you will become, nothing else. Not your resources, not money, not friends, not people that you know, not your father, not your mother, not the clan that you were born into, not the nationality you were born into, not the country you were born in, but confidence. That's it. So the famous startups that we all know today as large companies like Amazon, Google, Apple, Disney, Harley Davidson, Apple, the, the toy company, all of these companies, these billion dollar companies started in a garage. Amazon started in a little garage in Seattle, and I was there recently last year, August, and I happened to see that area. Apple started in a garage. So big ideas, great businesses don't come because of some great beginning. They actually come from very humble beginnings. So you should think about what you can do with what you have, not about what you can do with what you don't have. Most people stop thinking about launching a business, about going for another job, because they think I don't have the resources for it. Well, you won't until you actually try for it. So most of the big bill, billion dollar businesses and billionaires you know of were once upon a time, nothing. So how do you handle failure, right? Failure is, is so huge, so massive that uh, when I generally meet somebody who's failed, he actually looks like that to me, right? Literally, literally like that. It's all on your face, your body, your posture, you're like that. And you, sh you say failure. So even when you go looking for a job, I know that I'm never gonna hire you because you're one big have failure. Confidence allows you to keep yourself in the right perspective, position and posture, even in failure. So that the opposite person never understands that this person has lost everything in his life. He thinks this person is the opportunity that he's looking for. So if you look at what confidence can do, confidence actually fuels your failure. So when you are in failure, confidence allows you to fuel yourself to success because it tells you, you can't give up. You need to keep going on. It tells you, you can't stop. You need to keep going on. So Michael Jordan, the famous basketball player, he missed 9,000 shots in his career. He lost 300 games because of his bad play, Michael Jordan, all right? Honda, the famous uh, billionaire who owns Honda, the car, the car company, was turned down by Toyota in a job interview. Toyota turned him down saying, yeah, good for Toyota. So he left that, that interview not being depressed and sad and sorry for himself. He left that interview thinking, I'm gonna launch a competitor to Toyota. And he launched Honda. Colonel Sanders, the famous KFC uh, old, man. He, he's tried to sell his recipe to more than 1,004 uh, restaurants until one of them accept, accepted it after a very long journey of 50 to 60 years. Edison, the famous <laughs> leader of, of the uh, you know, modern world, was told that he was too stupid to learn. And it was told not by anybody else, but his own teacher. His teacher said that this boy, Edison, is very stupid. He cannot learn. That's what they said to his mother. And Edison made 1,000 unsuccessful attempts, 1,000 unsuccessful attempts at inventing the light bulb. And finally, we got light. You see this light here today? This was after 1,000 unsuccessful attempts by a guy, by a man who was told by his teacher that he was stupid. So if anybody tells you you're stupid, you're dumb, you're good for nothing, you're a failure, guess what? That means you're something. That means you're someone. That means that you can do something in this world. So how do you create confidence, right? So now this is the important part of the session. So I want you to, guys to really focus on this. And if you need to take some notes and like uh, Shazad said, at the end of this, you can ask me questions, okay? So how do you create confidence? So there are a few steps. And those few steps are actually five keys. You have five keys to making yourself more confident. So listen carefully. And if you have further questions then ask me later uh, on this forum or on Facebook, if you're watching me live, which I can see you are. So thank you for watching me here. So the first thing about confidence is preparation. You have to prepare. Most people go into situations and they fail because they are not prepared enough. You need to prepare yourself. If you're not prepared enough, you are going to fail. Preparation is the foundation of confidence. 
That's why when there are exams for students, for example, why do we ask them to prepare? Because we don't want them to be in a shock looking at a question paper thinking, oh my God, I've never seen this question in my life. So what you need to do is prepare. When you have a situation, there are very few situations in your, in your life that are surprises. Most of them are known to you. You know your boss is upset. You know your business is not going well. You know you're out of job. You know you don't have friends. You know there is an issue with your relationship. All of these, you can prepare for it. And how do you prepare for it? Preparation involves developing knowledge, experiences, skill set, psychology, resources, and support necessary. What is all of this? This is all that little jig bang that you need to put together your act so that you can be prepared. So if you don't know something, go ask someone who knows that. If you think you're low on confidence, have some friends support you. If you think you don't have the experience, go get the experience. If you want to win, if you want to succeed, you need to be confident. And confidence can only come if you have prepared yourself enough. And imagine you've been asked by your boss to, to come play with him a golf game. Okay? He said, hey, listen, uh, Seth, why don't you come and play with me golf this weekend? And you've never played golf before. So are you going to embarrass yourself? No, you're going to go out there and you're going to talk to friends who play golf, understand the rules, and you're going to go and try and practice it a few times so that you don't embarrass yourself when you go out with your boss to play a game of golf. You'll try to behave as if you know this game since the day you were born. The idea is to develop enough preparation so that you can be confident. So preparation is a very good element, a very good ingredient for you to be confident. So this is number one, preparation. What's number two? Mental skills. So you have a toolbox in your head and you always keep a few things ready, all right? So if he says this, I say that. If this happens, I do that. If this is what comes out of the whole discussion, this is how I behave. Plan it. Don't try to act it when you're there. Plan it in advance. Go in. Always have that. So if you're playing a game of cricket and you know this guy bounces the ball too many times, plan it in your head. I'm not good at hitting the, the bouncer. Let me duck. Oh, I think I can hit him because there's nobody fielding on the, on the square. Plan everything. If you don't plan what you're doing, you're bound to fail. So your toolbox should have two or three options. That's it, two or three. Don't have too many options. So you get confused if you have too many options. Okay, so the first thing is to be prepared. And the second thing is to have a few mental skill toolboxes in your head. What's the third thing? Now, this is what everybody faces, adversity. While people think that most people have confidence because they're on the top of their game, no, they're not. You need confidence when you're not on the top of your game. That's when confidence is needed. Confidence is not needed when you're completely happy, successful, everything is going your way, there's nothing going wrong, why do you need confidence? Do you need confidence then? You need confidence when things are not going well, when you're still on the losing side. You need confidence when failure is the only thing surrounding you, nothing else. So imagine if there are two people who are faced with a challenge. Two people are faced with a challenge. One is gonna be negative and back out. One is going to be very anxious, very scared, very fearful, and back out. But the other one will take it as a challenge. So one person gets a call from his boss and says, hey, uh, listen, uh, Arman, I'm sorry, but uh, we have to let you go. Um, we're cutting off a few people. It's a recession, and we can't keep you employed anymore. So you need to be let go. I'm firing you. So the first person is very sad, very disappointed, very negative, starts shaking, starts crying, doesn't know what's gonna happen in this world, blah, 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 and guess what? The whole thing falls apart. The second person gets the call, and the same boss tells the second person, I'm gonna fire you because you know, uh, I'm, I'm doing some cuts in my budget and I don't think I can keep you anymore, so I have to let you go, you're fired. So this guy says, hey boss, you know what? Thank you, I really appreciate everything you've done for me. I learned a lot from you. And uh, I really wish the company and you a lot of success. Now, just think, two employees got fired. One was sad, shaken, completely defeated, and didn't say anything. The only thing he said, why, come on, 
what did I do, boss? I, I'm working so hard. Why did you do this? And the second person says, well, you know what, boss, thank you so much. I really liked working here. I liked being with the team. I appreciated the company. I think the company gave me a lot to learn with. And I think I'm, I'm going to take a lot from here. What's going to happen? The second person who took this as a challenge and motivated himself or herself is a person that this boss will think, do I really want to let this guy go? And even if he lets him go, this person is now mentally prepared to look for other jobs, to look for other assignments, maybe launch his own business. Why? Because his mentality is correct. He has developed a sense of confidence that makes him believe that he can do something in this world, that he can achieve. A boss does not decide whether he sits with a job or without it. He decides whether he sits with a job or without it. So confidence allows you to create a game on which you can be on top. And that's where confidence comes from. So you need to have the mentality and the physical attributes to face challenges. 2020 is gonna be one of the most difficult years you have ever faced, I can tell you that right now. I can, I've been looking at enough economic reports, enough market uh, outlooks, it does not look pretty at all at all. If anybody's trying to tell you, convince you that we're going to snap out of it, this whole economic thing is going to change. We're going to have a great, no, most of you will have challenges with your jobs. Most of your businesses are going to have challenges with revenues. So what do you do? You sit there and start crying. What do you do? Sit there and make your health bad because this is what's happening. No, you prepare more, you try more and you get a mentality that says, that I'm supposed to do what is my part, which is try, 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 and more tries. And success or failure is not in your hand. It's not in your hand. It's, a hand. it's in the hands of Allah. So you do your part and let Allah do his part. Imagine if you gave up. Imagine if you sat at home. Imagine you started feeling sick. How are you supposed to get successful? How are you supposed to speak for yourself? Your family is counting on you. Your wife, your mother, your kids, they're all counting on you. And you gave up because you lost your job? You gave up because you got fired? You gave up because your business was going south? You don't have that option, my friend. Negativity creates anxiety, which creates fear, which creates failure. Confidence creates positivity, creates the posture you need and the perspective you need to have. So adversity should ingrain more confidence in you. So when you're having a tough time, that means you should be more confident. Perspective, perspective plays a huge role. And I was, I was really impressed with one of my good friends uh, who also does training here in Kuwait. Um, and I took his, his little coach here. He said that when you go uh, in the rain with an umbrella, it is not to stop the rain. <laughs> when you go in the rain with an umbrella, it's not to stop the rain. It's for you to be dry in the rain. So get your perspective correct. When you have a situation, the situation will not end because you started to put an effort. The situation will start to get addressed when you start to put an effort. So success will not come to you in the next week or the next month. Allah alam, only Allah knows when success will come to you. But what you can do is consistently keep trying. Hold that umbrella and keep yourself as long as possible dry in that rain, in that storm for as long as it needs to be. Because when that rain will stop, your rainbow will shine on you because you stood there and you gave it your best shot. You didn't give up. So your perspective about what you're doing in life decides whether you're going to be successful or not. Success always confirms more confidence. So when you have success in your, in your lives, you will always be more confident. So the reason why I'm doing this session today is to tell everybody that this is not the year to give up. This is probably the year to become the strongest fort you have ever been. This is probably the year where you don't know how to give up. Look around you, everybody's giving up. You don't give up. Why? Because you are supposed to succeed. 
Why? Because you have confidence in you. How? Because you decided to have confidence in you. Confidence does not come just by chance. It only comes when you decide it. So if you want to be successful, you need to face challenges. You need to face problems and then you will be successful. So first thing is preparation, prepare enough. Second is have a few options in your head always, the mental toolkit. Third thing is adversity, challenges, problems, obstacles, failure should make you stronger, not weaker. Get support, let people support you, your friends, your family, and get the perspective right. And success is something that should give you more success, inshallah. So who's in control at the end of this? Is it your body, is it your brain, or is it you? Who's in control? It's you. It's always you. You're always in control. If you're in the darkest pits, you're in control. If you're in the deepest ocean, you're in control. If you're bound from head to toe, you're in control. All the freedom fighters, every one of them, if you read their story, every time they were caught and they were tortured and then they are about to be killed, they are about to be hanged, what did they do? They showed their resilience. They showed who they were. And where did this resilience come from? It came from confidence. Why? Because they knew they were in control. That you can break their body. You can cut their body apart. But you can't break them. Nobody can break you. If you're confident. No one. No one. No matter who they are. Not a country. Not a leader. Not a strong man. Not people. Not a group. No one. You can break yourself. So always make yourself as a person, as an individual, as a human being that cannot be broken. And the only way you get broken is with failure. So decide today that you will be a very strong you, a very confident you. Because if you are, then you are in control. And if you're in control, you can get out of anything in this world. Anything. So like I said in the beginning, there are two sides of this slide. Where one side which says birth, death, your body parts, time and function, which you have no control of. You have no control of your, your life or your death. So the time you have in this world, make it work. Make it work for you. So if you want to have self-confidence, what do you do? You need to have regular nurturing of yourself. You know, you're used to telling yourself that, you know, I'm such a loser. I'm not that smart. I'm not that creative. Oh, guess what? I'm not even good looking, right? What you need to tell yourself is the opposite. You need to tell yourself, I'm a winner. I'm a great guy. I'm a very creative person. And guess what? I'm good looking too, even with this beard. I think I'm great looking. If I didn't say that to myself, I wouldn't be talking to you with this confidence. I need to brain myself regularly to say, that I'm good. And sometimes you need to put these little yellow stickies in front of your mirror, in front of your desk, saying, I am a winner. Say it to yourself. When you say something, it hits your head. It hits in your brain. It registers there. So what you need to do is to basically make sure that you constantly pass messages to yourself saying, I'm great. I'm a winner. I'm the best there is. There's nobody better than me. Everything that you need to do to get yourself positive in your head. Do that every day. There's another thing that I want you to, to pay attention to, which will help you a lot. Now, it is made in such a way that it, it can either feel excited or anxious. Now, if you're excited, that's positive. If you're anxious, that's negative. Anxious leads to fear. Why? Because uh, when you're excited or anxious, there is cortisol that is produced in your body that makes you either stressed or pumped up. But where, how you position yourself, are you anxious or excited, decides whether you're going to be stressed or pumped up. So the second thing that you do is there's a breathing exercise that you do for five seconds. You take five deep breaths in and one long breath out. Do that for a few times and then it kind of changes the chemical formulation within your brain. It tries to work against anxiety. 
five deep breaths in through your nostrils and one long breath out, very long one, all right? That will allow you to calm down a little bit. You have to find a way to get yourself in a positive position. Now, sometimes when I have a huge uh, audience, I have you know, a number of hundred, a few thousands watching me live, um, sometimes even I get nervous, right? So what do I do? I start creating a scene for something that is very petty. So for example, I ask somebody for a bottle of water and he brings me the bottle of water. I say, what the hell is this? I asked for cold water. Why did you bring me warm water? I don't like warm water. If you got me cold water, I'd say, what the hell is this? Why did you get me cold water? You want me to get a flu while I'm, I'm talking on stage? I want to get myself upset because upset people are very confident people. So sometimes when you have a situation in your life and you want to be in control, you want to be confident, Try to give your chest out like that, you know? Like you're sitting now like this, you get your chest out like that. The minute I get my chest out, my brain is thinking that I'm in, a, in an aggressive posture, a posture that is supposed to start a fight. And people who get into fights are usually confident people. So there are a few things that you can do, and this slide will be shared by Shazad later, and you can um, try these exercises to get yourself into a confident uh, chemical position within your brain or a confident posture that allows your brain to tell your whole body that you're a confident person. So one of the most important things for you to do to be confident and successful is move out of your comfort zone. Until and unless you move out of your comfort zone, you're not going to be successful and you're definitely not going to be confident. Try getting out of your comfort zone. If you don't get out of your comfort zone, it's not going to work for you. If you really want to be successful, if you really want to be confident, please get out of your comfort zone. Oh, I can't do this. I've never done this. Oh my God, I don't know this guy. Oh my God, I don't know this country. It's not going to help you. It's really not going to help you. Up until the point that you are leaving your comfort zone, you're not going to be confident or successful. Why? Because confidence is that thin line that takes you to the other side. Confidence takes you to the other side. And what's waiting for you on the other side? What's waiting for you on the other side? It's success. So if you take confidence with you throughout the journey of your life, you will be successful. All you need to do is carry confidence and then you will be successful. There are lots of free um, uh, training online that you can do as well as the AMP skill development um, programs that are happening regularly throughout the year. Uh, that AMP does. You can take up those skill development uh, training sessions and, and develop yourself. Uh, there's Coursera doing it for free. There's Khan Academy doing it for free. There's Udemy. There's Open Yale courses and many others. Try developing yourself. Don't be the same person throughout your life. Try picking up new skills. You can't be confident unless you are different and, and, and strong. You have to be that. So try picking up new skills. And I really hope that this, this session on, on self-confidence and how you can develop it has helped you because confidence is what is required in this year, 2020. In this year, the year of the greatest challenge, this is, this is everything that you've seen in a Hollywood movie, everything. The Tom Cruise uh, uh, movie where the world ends, the Brad Pitt movie where the world ends, any movie where the world ends, this is the year, 2020. 2020, you will be challenged with your job. You may not have a job. 2020 will be the year where you might lose everything in your business. 2020 will be the year where you will be short of money. This is where you need to have confidence. So today's session is the one that could help you. Today's session is the one that could help you pass to the other side. Remember I told you, if you carry confidence with you in your journey of life, there's something waiting for you on the other side. And that something is successful. So I wish all of you a lot of success. I wish all of you uh, a lot of positive uh, energy. I definitely wish for all of you good health. I definitely wish for all of you um, your personal safety. And no matter what anybody tells you, coronavirus is serious. No matter what anybody tells you, coronavirus can happen. Always remember, you know, we live lives where we always hear about that guy who was on a bike, had an accident and died. And we think, oh, poor guy, you know, 
he was driving the bike very fast. I'm sure he was now wearing a helmet. The concept of always thinking that all bad can happen to somebody else is not a good concept. But the concept of preparation, which I told you before, is that always prepare for the worst. So when you're riding your bike, make sure you have your helmet on. When you're riding your bike, make sure you're not driving very fast. When you're riding a bike, make sure that you are not sleepy. If you didn't prepare yourself correctly, you're bound to fail in that ride of your bike. So don't think that coronavirus will only happen to people who are uh, infected by someone or they were supposed to be infected. No, until and unless you take care of what you're doing and how you're doing it, you will not be safe. So in the interest of your health, in the interest of people in your house and their health, in the interest of the people within your community and their health, I suggest you follow self-quarantine measures. I suggest you follow good hygiene measures. And I suggest you stop complaining about it because this is a situation that needs you to go through it with confidence. So may Allah make it easy for all of us and may Allah get us out of this in the best shape or form. May this year have any amount of challenges that, that are there and that face us, but may Allah give us the strength, the knowledge, the wisdom, and the confidence to face them. So I'm now uh, open for any questions. So um, feel free to ask me questions. Shazad, you can take over. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, uh, Abdullah, sir. It was really a nice uh, session overall. We've got a few questions with us. The first question is, my confidence most of the time is reversed. What can I do? Can he specify what does he mean by reversed? Does he mean that he had confidence and he lost it? Or does he mean that it, it kind of goes away from him in certain circumstances? We will question it again. Is planning the following a, a routine the same thing? Is planning and following a routine the same thing? No, it's not the same thing. Planning is something that you try to imagine in circumstances that you believe um, uh, are normal to you. Uh, routine is not the same thing. Routine allows you to understand what the fact really is. It makes you repeat it until you master it. So a plan could be 100%. Routine could end up being 25% of the 100%. So you should be good at both. You should have a plan that is flexible and a routine that is firm. I've got another question from uh, Shafia Shafi. Sir, I always make a proper routine to perform my daily task, but I'm unable to execute it because of procrastination. Okay, so anything that you plan in your routine will have obstacles. You have to write down those obstacles as well. And any, any of those obstacles means that you're supposed to fail. That's why they're there. So if you meet that failure, don't stop. Just keep going at it. The idea is for you to overcome it, not for you to back down. So you see, if you have a wall and if you don't understand that there could be a door, then you keep hitting yourself on the wall and you hurt yourself or you come back. No, you keep looking for the door. Um, is it okay to sometime move forward your junior because dealing with few those official only interested in bribes. My junior deal with such officials and deals in place of my boss. I will not encourage anybody to, to practice something that is destroying economy. Corruption today is, is so bad that corruption is actually hitting your pockets. So if if a hundred people decided to corrupt one particular official to get their job done, 100,000 people now have to do the same by force because these officials have realized that this is a way to make money. So people need to understand when they try to corrupt people, officials or anyone to get the job done, what they're actually doing is making their own lives and the lives of others very, very miserable. So you need to basically find yourself in the right ethics of practice and not the wrong ones. Because good ethics make you more successful. Bad ethics makes you just a street smart person. 
And a street smart person is not someone who will ever be a leader. Yes, you will find them very rich, but guess what? You know what? Uh, this is life, right? So you have people who are sometimes extremely rich with, with no religious beliefs, with no moral values. But do you want to be like that? You have to understand who you are and who you need to be. If you are someone who's supposed to be a person, a soul that's answerable to your creator, you need to make your actions worthy of that. Your actions cannot be worthy of this world only. If your actions are only worthy of this world, then that's who you are. You can't kid yourself. So no matter what this person, his junior is doing to get up in his, in his career, that's his journey. When he meets his end, when he goes to his grave, and when that, that, that mud covers him and the angels come, he has to answer. Where did you get this money? And what did you do with it? He has to answer. So if you believe that your answers to your creator have to be the right ones, and inshallah they will be, then don't worry about this. These are the challenges of today's world. That do I achieve moral success or do I achieve worldly success? There are drug dealers who are very rich. There are people who are murderers and rapists who are very powerful. Do we want to be like that? Do we want to imitate them? This is, is this what we want to teach our children? No. I've got another question. What's the difference between confidence and overconfidence? Confidence and overconfidence has a very thin line. And the thin line is a confident person is always liked. And an overconfident person is always hated. Because an overconfident person has an aura of arrogance. And a confident person has always an aura of patience. He never oversteps his, his line. He never extends his authority. An overconfident person generally shoots himself in the foot. Generally shoots himself in the foot. So overconfident people are those that run right till the edge of the cliff and then fall off. Confident people are those who run right at the edge of the cliff and stop five inches away from the edge. Confidence tells you when to shut up. Overconfidence doesn't have a lock, doesn't have a zip. You can talk away to glory. Uh, I've got another question. Some big Hollywood celebrity said in an interview, never have a backup plan because it shows that you are not confident about your main plan. And also you will not put your more than 100% as long as you have second option and backup plan. You say to have two to three options. I also generally keep three to four backup options. I also felt that maybe I don't give my more than 100% or not even 100% I feel so. How to balance? What's the right approach? Uh, okay, so here's, here's how it goes, right? So you went for a job interview and you planned your job interview. So you went there and you said, yeah, generally they ask this question. They say, tell me something about yourself. And then they say, okay, what, what, what were you doing in your last job? Blah, blah, blah. Now, what if the interviewer said, um, listen, I don't want to know anything about you. Tell me something about your mother. Uh, don't tell me something about your job uh, responsibility in the last job. Tell me something about what you were delegating to your subordinate. Now, if you didn't have a mind that functioned at these levels, you would get stuck. And if you got stuck, there was no way out for you, none whatsoever. So always have two or three plans. Remember the toolkit that I told you, two or three options. Always do that. I have heard enough public speakers, uh, peers of the industry, uh, management gurus say, go with one plan. And I always say, I never have one point of failure. If I have one point of failure, I will fail. But if I have a mind that's open to ideas, I will have multiple choices of success. Your mind is fit enough to carry two or three options. Your mind is not just geared to be one. So in my view, no, always have multiple options. How to improve 
stage daring with confidence to raise our ideas or suggestions come again i'm sorry how to improve or dare stage daring with confidence to raise our ideas or suggestion stage daring to my knowledge i think the person is trying to say how to remove the fear of stage oh how to remove the fear of stage okay this is a good one so by the way if, if anybody wants to do um, a public speaking on stage i i consider it a total waste of time uh, why because you know most parents when they come to me and they say you know you need to teach can you teach my kids how to how to be confident on stage and i say why i said because you know i want my child to speak on stage or i want my uh, whatever to speak on stage again i say why you see until you have content that you believe in until you have a purpose for you to deliver something on stage you won't find the confidence everything else is fake and anything fake fades away if you think you have a message that's worthy enough and strong enough for you to deliver you will prepare your mind so much that the stage fear will just disappear and the other option is the one that i told you about the water bottle just get angry about something anything right two minutes before going on stage shout at somebody start screaming that anger will make you confident okay i've got another question my question is how to stop procrastination entering our daily lives well it enters because you let it right um, when was the last time a guest entered your house when you didn't open the door it's a very simple answer to a very complicated question but it is a very simple answer you are angry because you wish to you're sad because you want to you are happy because you choose to and you get anxious because you decided to so you need to basically let something happen for it to happen remember i told you at the start of this session that you are divided in three, three of you you your brain and your body who's in control you if you're in control you should stop it you should stop it you should try and train yourself that why i'm being led to this particular situation why am i being led into this particular feeling of whatever negativity and you take it out it's all about you how to use self confidence in personal life versus professional life it's the same thing it's not different um uh, if you have self confidence it will stick with you whether it's on a personal life or your professional confidence is a very unique tool because confidence tells you when to talk and when not to talk confidence allows you the art of patience so in your personal life confidence will make you very very successful because it will tell you when to shut up so confidence does help you in your personal life in a in a great deal confidence helps you uh, remember ga gain over adversity that when you have a challenge when you have problem in life you will show confidence which means everybody around you will be a little relaxed that you are not overacting you're not reacting you're not doing something which is crazy oh i lost my job oh i lost my money and all of that you're very calm so your personal life is very happy if you show calmness okay, well uh, we've got a lot of questions as well away but uh, i'll just take another 5 minutes and then any balanced questions which are left we will send it to you across so you can uh, answer to them later on so arshad here would would you what would you advise to students few under 15 are attending your session to build confidence in deciding their career and goals in life okay interesting one uh if you're a student if you're listening to me i want you to understand something if you want to choose your career right so generally everybody tells you uh okay look for this uh, you need to get these grades uh, these marks and then you have to look at these colleges these universities and you you kind of uh find that that college or university that's going to make you a doctor or engineer or a developer a programmer a uh, scientist whatever i'll tell you something different we are living in times from 2020 onwards where economy will decide what you need to be this is a fact okay so if i was you and if i was 15 16 17 18 years old i would look at the economic outlook i would sit with my parents and say mom dad okay so which part of the world looks 
very appealing for me to be in? Or which industry in my country looks like the most appealing industry that I should be in? Why? Because economic turmoils will continue now. Uh, previously, they were every eight years. Now they've shortened their cycle to seven years. Who knows? They would come at five years too. That means your, your sector might be at risk. So all those guys who, who you know, worked hard and studied and became bankers and worked in investment banks, most of them are going to be out of jobs. Okay, I gave a lecture in a dental school in Pune. And I remember at the end of it, they were asking me, sir, where can I work? I said, aren't you dentist? Shouldn't you be dentist? They said, well, you know, it's not easy to get a job as a dentist. So you need to first look at how economy is doing in your country, in your state, in your city. Then look at the sectors which are doing well. Then choose the, the, the job titles in that sector that you like, that you appeal to. And you say, okay, this is what I want to do. Then look at the last job postings that have happened in that sector for the last three months. Uh, what were they looking for in terms of qualifications, et cetera? And what were their pay skills? If you like all of that, then look for the colleges or universities that are teaching that skill. Then look for the grades that you need to get to get into those colleges. Then sit with your mom and dad and decide on what will be the cost of that education and then go for it. Do it the other way around. The days of having ambition and reaching are finished. It is true. It is completely finished. So it is no longer a, an era where you decide to be an engineer and you will end up being an engineer. Look at the amount of unemployed around you. Why do you think I promote entrepreneurship so much in, in the world? I, I say, guys, do your own thing. Try to create your own businesses. So you need to sit with yourself and decide which part of the economic chart you want to be in and then go towards that side. Don't try to create ambitions and, and symbolic uh, you know, roadmaps of career planning, which most uh, unfortunate people keep sharing with kids in schools, colleges, and universities. I just don't agree with it. You know, the, the reason why we have so many un, un, unemployed is because everybody's following the same game plan. Everybody's going into the same queue to be engineers and then no jobs for it. Everybody's going into the same queues to be bankers and there's no jobs for it. So why should the parents and the students have to go to five years, seven years, in some case, nine years, and in the end, stand in a queue where you might get a job or you might not get a job. So I think if you're 15 years old, if you're 17 years old, or even 19 years old, I need for you to look at what is out there before you decide what you need to be in your career. Okay, I've got one question from Sabur Sheikh. I generally take decisions which makes me odd man out. Maybe because I keep choosing different field of career option for myself, which are not new to world, but new to the background I come from. So I feel when people differ my opinion, it's okay. And it does not bother me. But sometimes I get feeling that maybe I'm becoming arrogant. I get doubts on me if it is confident or self-confident, how to discover my own reality. Well, if people hate you, then you're arrogant, that's for sure. So that's a very simple thing, uh, but that doesn't define whether you are um, confident or not. Um, okay, so if, if you're changing jobs, is that what he's saying? He's changing jobs regularly? Is that it? Uh, he's not changing job. He's not mentioned that changing job. Maybe in a meeting or something. Can you re repeat the question to me, please? Uh, I generally take decision which makes me odd man out, maybe because I keep choosing different field or career options for myself, which are not new to world, but new to the background I come from. So if this person is choosing options regularly, which are alien to him or her, then um, either he's too confident of himself or he's bound to make a lot more mistakes than he should. Always remember when you get into something, you need to get to the end of it before you jump to the next thing. And that end may be 12 months, maybe 12 years, but you need to try and attempt to get to the end of it. If you don't, then what you're doing is you're just jumping ship every time. Uh, being confident does not really mean that you could be uh, you know, doing the right thing. Always remember the, the man who decides to be a thief and loot your house is confident because if he wasn't confident, he wouldn't get into your house, right? 
the guy who picks your pocket in a train is confident because he knows that he could get caught and beaten up, but he's confident. So uh, try to use your confidence to get you to a success that you can keep, success that is legal, success that is sustainable. Uh, otherwise, what you're doing is you're just using confidence like a tool, um, which is like having a dog, uh, a big dog, and, and teaching him how to bite people because you have the dog, so why not let him bite people? So try and focus yourself into a few areas, uh, be good at it and, and develop yourself. Uh, trying to be odd one out or not is just grabbing attention. It's not, it doesn't mean anything. Uh, how to bounce back after any confidence shattering incident at work? All right, the way to bounce back is very simple. You go and look at what happened very carefully. You take a pen and a paper, okay, like this. Take a pen and a paper and write down what you did wrong, write down why you failed, write down what did you think you did right, and then look at it, and then write in the end, this is the end, which means I'm no longer gonna think about it, and close the chapter. And every time you think about it, go look at the same document. How to change? Keep looking at the same. And then you have to change your perspective. So how to change one's perception for confidence and success? Perception for confidence and success. Uh, confidence and success is a perception itself. It is, it is how you look at things because of the purpose. You see, if you're doing anything without a purpose, then you're bound to fail. If you're doing something with a purpose, you never stop. So if I'm playing a football match and if I'm losing 4-0, I'm trying to score one goal. You know why? Because I want to go back home thinking they won 3-0, not 4-0. So I'm trying to win a bit of victory from defeat every time because life is all about that. Life is all about getting your little victories from larger defeats. Life is not about, about always winning successfully. Always remember when Apollo 13 went up in space, it came back and it was referred to as the world's most successful failure. Why? Because when they went up, they had a technical failure and they couldn't get back. So um, uh, uh, co command control center started talking to them, Houston, and telling them that, you know, what do you have over there that will allow us to teach you how to repair the faults inside the spaceship, which they did, and they came back. Why is it called the most successful failure in the world? Is because it was supposed to go for an orbit around the moon. It didn't, uh, so it failed. Why is it called successful? Because they got all the astronauts back to Earth alive. So life is all about that. It's all about getting some successes from a very large failure. That's the way it is. Okay, I'll just come up with one last question. Uh, every time I attend an interview, they will reject by saying that myself having overconfidence, how to get rid of it? Oh, because you're arrogant, it's visible. <laughs> I, I've, I've heard that from many people. I've, I, I've heard that from a guy who, who told me that you know, he gets rejected because people say he's arrogant. He gets rejected because people say he's overqualified. So I asked him, how do you answer your questions? And he says, you know, every time they tell me, uh, you know, what were you doing? I tell them I did this, I did this, and I was so successful. And you know, the company that I worked for uh, didn't really deserve me because, you know, I, I was way too good. And I'll always remember the kind of answers you give decides what they're gonna perceive you as. So your arrogance, no matter how much you try to hide, it will teeth through your mouth. So try to be less arrogant when you go there. Calm yourself down, give people enough respect. Show patience when you're answering a question. Try to pause. Try to always tell yourself, I'm wanting to give this guy respect. And if you don't do that, you're going to be arrogant and it's going to be visible. And because of that, you're not going to get a job. Nobody wants to hire an arrogant person. No one. None whatsoever. Okay. I, will, I still have a lot of questions, but I, we are running short of time. So I will stop it here we've got another yeah let people uh, message me uh, on on my on my uh, contact details that you have which is either my facebook page or my instagram page uh, or my linkedin page and i i always look at it i i post a lot of videos there and messages there and i make sure that i get back to people uh, i must admit that i'm uh, yeah i mean very very um humbled with some of the responses that I get when people tell me that their lives have changed, that they have achieved something. It's, trust me, it's not, got nothing to do with me. It's all about how you took my advice and how you implemented it, 
wholeheartedly and success comes to you because Allah gives it to you, not because of my advice or, or the session. Uh, what you need to do is, is you need to begin. Everything only starts when you, be, when you begin. So I want you to begin. I want you to begin to change. I want you to change for the better. And I want that better for you to be good for this world and the hereafter, inshallah. So get in touch with me in any of my uh, channels of communication, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. Uh, it's all there. Uh, I think, Shazad, if you can share that with people or you can look it's me up, true, Allah has, and I'm there. And uh, yeah, it's time for uh, Maghrib Salat here as well. So I need to, to pray. Um, I really wish, like I said, at the end of my discussion for everybody to be safe and healthy and be ready for a very challenging year, but be confident of that challenging year so that you're prepared, inshallah. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Abdullah Sayyid. It was really a pleasure and honor to have you with us. And we will be looking forward to more such sessions with you, inshallah, in future as well. We'll, I, I will download all the questions which are here on my screen and I'll send it to you for your email, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. Thank you everyone for attending AMP Web Talk Self Confidence. I hope that this was a good uh, learning for everyone. And thank you so much for being a part of it. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.